How's it going everyone? I'm here on a happy 316 day with my PWG DDT4 2014 DVD review. And let's not waste any time guys and jump right into the video. Uh, you see in the cover here, you have the DDT4 logo right there. You got Ricochet, uh, Trent, uh, Chuck Taylor, and Rich Swan right there. Spoiler alert, this was the finals. And uh, up here, of course, you got Drake Younger, Kyle O'Reilly, Chris Hero, and Johnny Gargano, which was a four-way number one contenders match, so that's why they're on there. Uh, unique little cover right there, of course, always recorded live on Friday, January 31st, in Rosita, California. So nice little cover there. Uh, the spine, you got a picture of uh, Trent, Chuck Taylor. And the usual PWG spine right there. Uh, you open it up. You got Drake Young on the flap, the inside right there. There's the disc. Got Adam Cole and Best Friends right there. DDT4 logo, uh, DDT4 logo right there. And uh, yeah, go to the back. As usual, you got your uh, event pictures from the show on the DVD um, back here. So you know, it gives you a little insight of what the uh, the show looks like when you watch it. And you had the little description thingy mabobber right there. It's right together now. On January 31st, 2014, Pro Wrestling Gorilla kicked off the new year with DDT4, or annual tag team tournament extravaganza. A super a super no vacancy crowd filled crowd filled uh, American Legion post number 308 in New York, California to win his nine matches in all, including the hard fought four way number one contender match and the semifinals his final round match at the DDT4 tournament. Now that you have the unique opportunity to own this event on DVD, well, unique. If it were in 1976, DVDs were are fairly commonplace today. They always have these weird like <laughs> like phrases and words on these things. I don't know why they try to make it unique like that for, but whatever. I mean, if chances are if you're reading this, you already have the DVD, so I don't know why they try to sell it on, sell it on you still. But yeah, it's just I don't know. I guess it'd be creative. But uh, DDT4 for this year was um, definitely a great uh, tournament, great way to kick off the show. I don't think it'll be probably one of the better shows after the end of the year is all said and done, but this was a pretty solid way to kick off the you know the year. So uh, yeah, good show from PWG. Actually, a great show actually. Of course, first match you had was the DDT4 first round match. You had Best Friends versus Rockness Monsters, which was a uh, good opener. You know, Trent Beretta. I, I keep calling him Trent Beretta because when he was in WWE, but he's actually just Trent now. Uh, Trent and Chuck, Chuck Taylor are actually a really good tag team. At first, I wasn't really sold on them, but I'm just after the show, I can truly say I'm really sold on them. They're really good entertaining you know the rockness monsters aren't you know the greatest tag team uh, a few years ago they were pretty good but ever since you know i don't know in the last year or so from what i've seen rockness monsters aren't really anything you know really worth watching i mean johnny good time is really good i like johnny good time you know he actually did a sick um a spot where he jumped over the uh the uh turnbuckle and post on the outside so johnny good time is actually really good but johnny yuma was just he's just there in my eyes nothing really special but a uh, good way to off the show here a uh, sick fi finish when uh, chuck taylor and trent the best friends actually pulled out a trench coat from underneath the ring they made like this super mega man where i think trent was on chuck taylor's shoulders and they made like a mega man dude and they actually gave a choke slam to uh, johnny yuma off the top rope for the one two three to advance to the semifinals so definitely a good way to off the show there uh, at DDT4 first round match, you had PP Ray versus Unbreakable F Machines. A uh, very one sided match. You basically decided the Unbreakable F Machines basically destroyed PP Ray uh, throughout the majority of the match. Uh, PP Ray looks semi good when they start getting offense, and you know they definitely showed their tag team work. And that's, I kind of like PP Ray for the, that fact in this match. You know when they did get together and get the offense, they had a lot of tag team maneuvers and a lot of tag team you know finishes and whatnot, so that's what I liked about that, but majority of the match was just the Unbreakable F Machines showing their strength off in this match, pretty much, and uh, ending came when uh, Elegant and Cage, of course, with their finishes, I think on, was it, I don't know they hit it on, I think it might have been uh, Avalon, it doesn't really matter, they end up winning the, uh, winning the match with the uh, Disco Lariat and, of course, Elegant spinning Liger Bomb, so yeah, Unbreakable F Machines advance to the semifinals as well. Uh, then you had a DDT4 first round match, Candice Ray and Joey Ryan versus Cole, Steen, Cole, which was a very entertaining match. You know, you had uh, Steen and Cole basically, uh, it's funny, they actually imitated the Shawn Michaels Diesel thing before the match started in the ring to pose. And it was just a, you know, a fun match as you expect here. It only, it didn't get that much time, it only got like 10 minutes, but it was very entertaining. Of course, you had Cole and Steen trying to get Candice in the majority of the match because they just wanted to beat the hell out of her throughout the uh, the match and whatnot. And you know, every time they tried to attack Candice or try to hit like a dangerous move of Candice, Joey was there to protect her. But um, yeah, just very fun stuff here. I wouldn't mind this match happening again, you know, sometime in the future. If given a lot of time, like, you know, maybe 20 minutes, I think this would be a really good and fun match. But Cole Steen Cole ends up winning with a sick finish. Uh, Kevin Steen ended up in the uh, package pile driver. Actually, it was a super kick. 
into the package pile driver, and then um, uh, Steen rolled out Joey Ryan into a super kick by Cole after the package pile driver to win the match and advance to the semifinals. So very fun match there as well. And then of course to the final uh, uh, DDT4 first round match, you had ACH and Arrow Fox versus the Inner City Machine Guns, which was an awesome match. At first it started pretty slow. But you know this def- this was the longest match, the first round match that is for these uh, at the four first round matches. The longest one is like twenty minutes long. At first, it started a little bit slow, but then it started really picking up, and it, you know it's hitting a lot of high spot maneuvers, a lot of athleticism in this match. This is an overall great match. This is definitely the better, or this is the best first round match. The other one's pretty much on the same level because they didn't get that much time. But since this one got so much time, and you know the talent involved, you pretty much. Couldn't really expect anything less than a great match, and this was a great match here, of course. Uh, Intercity Machine Guns barely pull out the victory. Um, you know, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Rich Swan ended up going for a 450, missed, but ricocheted right behind him for a springboard 450 on, uh, I think it was ACH for the 1 2 3 victory. Like I said, great match here. You know, Air Fox looked phenomenal in this match, and definitely, definitely a great match there. And then we had the uh, non tournament singles match. You had Tommaso Ciampa versus Adam Thornstow who was making his PWG debut because Roger Strong was actually supposed to be in this match, but of course, AJ Styles injured him before this, so, you know, he couldn't show up, but this was a, it wasn't whatever match, I mean, this is Thornstall's debut, and this is the first time I ever saw him wrestle, and, you know, he was, he wasn't bad, and I thought he was pretty good for a guy his size, and he's pretty big, so, it was a pretty good match, a decent match, not pretty good, but, you know, for, for me, for first impression, it was pretty good, I should say, uh, Tommaso Trump got the win with a vicious knee to the face, and, uh, yeah, it was nothing special, it was just, you know, the fill-up time and whatnot. But, yeah, just decent match, nothing special. And then we had the uh, DDT4 semifinals ma- round match. You had Best Friends versus uh, Colstein Cole, which was um, pretty good. You know, it's funny because before the match started, you know, Steen and Cole are arguing that they're better friends. And Cole actually ran to the back before the match started to uh, put on Steen's, like, a gear like Steen's and T-shirt. That's why they're wearing, you know, the, the Mount Rushmore shorts right there, or shirts right there, because they're, you know, trying to match. And uh, it wasn't really even a match; it was like more of a brawl. They just brawled for like, you know, five to ten minutes in in the crowd, like not even the ring. They just brawled everywhere. They actually got onto the stage where they were doing commentary, and Chuck Taylor got on commentary as usual, like he does during matches like that. And uh, it was just, uh, it was very fun. It was very enjoyable. Um, Can Soraya actually cost Colstein Cole the match? She actually came out. And distracted Adam Cole and uh, Kevin Singh got rolled up uh, for the one, two, three. So uh, best friends advanced to the finals, which was a very fun match, very enjoyable. And then you had the uh, second uh, DDT4 semifinals round match. You had the Unbreakable F Machines versus the Inner City Machine Guns. Uh, this that was the best tournament match. Uh, throughout the entire tournament, that was definitely the best match. Uh, very very fun match. You had two completely different styles, and you know you have two body. Not bodybuilders, but two powerhouses in Cage and Elegant. And, you know, you had these two athletically gifted guys in Ricochet and Rich Swan. So those combinations combined just worked a very, very fun match here. It was very, very enjoyable. It was just, it was great. And, you know, the ending um, with the Interceding Machine Guns pull out the win was just very, very surprising to everyone. It was like a total shock and no one really saw it coming. Just a lot of the sequence, the, the ending sequence was awesome as well. Just a lot of like finishers back and forth and encountering and breaking up pinfalls. It was an awesome, awesome ending sequence as well. It was an awesome match. Uh, very good stuff, too. Like I said, the NXT Machine Guns and the pulling out the surprise victory to advance to the uh, finals round match. And then, of course, you had the four-way number one contender match. Chris Hero versus Johnny Gargano versus Kyle O'Reilly versus Drake Younger, which was an awesome, awesome, awesome match. Definitely match of the night. Uh, this actually got a lot of time, too. I'd say 25 minutes at most this, time, this match got. It was... Pretty much everything you would want a Fatal 4 match to be. You know, there's times where you had, like, basically two one-on-one matches happening in the ring. And then all the guys escalate into, like, a brawl, just all tearing each other apart. This was just very well executed. And, uh, very well executed, yeah. Uh, yeah. I said that twice for whatever reason. That I said it wrong the first time, but I said it right. But, yeah, just awesome match here. And there's times where there was actually, I think, on two occasions where there were... Th- uh, a three-way submission was locked on. On two different occasions, that was insane. It was just, honestly, this was uh, definitely PWG's best match of the match of the year so far, even though this is the only show they've done so far, so it's kind of like easy to say which one's match of the year so far. But this was just an awesome, awesome, awesome four-way match. Like, honestly, I can't get that through enough how awesome that match was. 
Hero looked great in this match. Uh, Drake Younger really wasn't involved a lot. There's actually a time where it was like a three-way match and Drake Young was just chilling on the inside. He didn't really do anything. But Drake Younger ended up getting the victory. Him and Kyle Riley went at it for a while towards the end. And uh, Drake Younger ended up hitting Drake's landing on Kyle for the 1-2-3 to become the number one contender for the PWG World Championship. So that's going to be interesting to see how him and Adam do at the uh, Mystery Vortex 2. Because I'm assuming that match is going to happen considering Drake's going to WWE. But yeah, just an insanely good four-way match. It was great stuff. And then, of course, you had the DDT4 uh, final round match, Best Friends versus uh, Inner City Machine Guns, which was a short match. It's only, like, not even ten minutes. It was probably, like, maybe eight minutes. And it was so good for the eight minutes it got. It was just straight-up action. It's fast-paced match, uh, nonstop. It was like if you're if you're running, like, a mile, and you're just nonstop. That's what it was. Just awesome, awesome, awesome. Just nonstop action, like I said. Great back-and-forth action. Uh, best friends end up getting the victory when Chuck Taylor ended up hitting awful waffle on, I think it was Ricochet, or I don't know he hit the awful waffle on, but Chuck Taylor hit the awful waffle to get the, uh, the, the win for the best friends to become the DDT4, uh, 2014 winners. Uh, like I said, just for the, the eight, ten minutes it got, it was nonstop, just a very, very fun match. I'd say it's probably the, um, uh, maybe third, uh, best tournament match of the night. But it was definitely, uh, I wish it got more time because it was honestly really, really good. And considering both teams had two matches prior to this, that, you know, of course, the Intercity Machine Guns had like two 20 minute matches, and Best Friends probably had like two 10, maybe 14 uh, minute matches. They uh, put on a really, that's probably why the match was so short, but it was still a very, very good match. But DDT4, um, 2014, great way for PWG to kick off to the other year. Can't wait for Mystery, Mystery Vortex 2. Uh, the show happens, I think, in maybe, is it? next weekend or two weeks i'm not 100 percent sure but it'll happen the dvd will probably be out in like early may so i'm like definitely looking forward to getting that show and watching that so yeah until next time guys thank you for watching the video and like i said earlier happy 316 day guys uh enjoy your day